In modern times when ancient Egyptian writing has ceased, how can we understand the hieroglyphics in the tombs and temples of Egyptian pharaohs? This is about the famous Rosetta Stone in history, and the true interpretation of Champollion. Today we will talk about this period of history. Please help share and subscribe to the channel before the program starts. On July 15, 1799, Pierre Franzois Xavier Bouchard, a French captain who was following Napoleon's occupation of Egypt, commanded Fort Street on the outskirts of a port town called Rosetta in the Nile Delta. When Julian was digging to expand the foundation, he accidentally dug up a large black stone. He realized the importance of the stone and reported it to the commander Abdullah Jacques de Menu, who decided that the stone should be sent to scientists at the Egyptian Institute established by Napoleon in Cairo for study and analysis, and it was shipped in August of the same year. Arrive in Cairo. Since the stone was unearthed outside Rosetta, it was named after the location where it was found. In 1801, Napoleon's army was defeated and surrendered by the British army, which also ended the three-year occupation period of the French army in Egypt. The change of ownership of Egypt also triggered a dispute over the ownership of the antiquities collected by the French army in Egypt. At that time, French scientists hoped to keep these antiquities and take them away from Alexandria when Cairo was breached in June. However, the British side believed that these antiquities were confiscated items and should belong to the property of King George III. At that time, the famous French naturalist e Catetian Geoffroy St. Hilaire wrote to the British ambassador Sir William Richard Hamilton, threatening to burn the fines if the British seized them. After the British army occupied Alexandria, they signed the Treaty of Alexandria with the French, officially ending the French occupation of Egypt. According to this treaty, the antiquities discovered by the French army in Egypt during their occupation should also be transferred to the British. However, when the French army retreated, they did not hand over the Rosetta Stone as agreed. Instead, they hid it on a small boat and prepared to smuggle it back to Europe. However, they failed and were captured by the British army halfway. Afterwards, the two parties agreed that the French side could retain the previous research results and the rubbings of the stele, but the British side obtained the actual ownership of the stele. The Rosetta Stone arrived in the UK in 1802 and was donated to the British Museum in the name of the King of England for collection. Since then, the Rosetta Stone has been displayed in the Egyptian pavilion of the museum, and is the most proud of the museum. One of the treasures of the town hall. In the following 200 years, the Rosetta Stone left the British Museum only once briefly in 1917, when the war was spreading towards the end of the First World War, because the museum was worried that London would be damaged by fierce bombing. Antiquities, saw a batch of important antiquities, including the Rosetta Stone, which were relatively light and easy to move, were secretly hidden in a subway station 50 feet underground in the Hoban area for a period of two years. It was not until the war ended and peace was restored that the antiquities were moved back to the museum for further display. However, not everyone around the world is happy to see the Rosetta Stone preserved in the British Museum. For example, the Supreme Council of Antiquities based in Cairo is the chief secretary and one of the organizations under the Egyptian Ministry of Culture. Dr. Zahi Horus, a well-known Egyptian archaeologist, has publicly called on the United Kingdom to return the Rosetta Stone to its true home, Egypt, because this stone is an important symbol of Egyptian civilization. The Rosetta Stone, on display today in the Egyptian room of the British Museum, is a flat stone monument about 114.4 cm high, 72.3 cm wide, and 27.9 cm thick, slightly rectangular in shape, but actually missing many corners. The black basalt, discovered 200 years later to be granite, with feldspar, mica, and quartz as its main constituents, weighs about 762 kg. The black surface of the marble is inscribed with white painted letters, and the two sides of the monument are inscribed with later additions, including, captured in Egypt by the British Army in 1801, on the left side, and, donated by King George III, on the right side. Presented by King George III, presented by King George III. Although the monument was cleaned up and restored to its original state by the British Museum's antiquities maintenance experts in 1998 with modern methods, the above inscriptions were preserved because they are also one of the witnesses to the deeds of modern human civilization. However, the above inscriptions have been preserved as they are also part of the witnesses of modern human civilization. In addition, there is a small corner on the left side of the bottom of the monument that was intentionally preserved and not cleaned up, mainly for the purpose of comparison, so that people can know the difference between before and after the cleaning. From top to bottom of the Rosetta Stone, there are three language versions of the same edict. 
At the top are 14 lines of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, also known as sacred script, which represents the language of dedication to the gods, with the beginnings and endings of the sentences missing. And in the middle are 32 lines of Egyptian cursive, demotic, also known as secular script, which was used by the common people of Egypt at the time, which is a type of Egyptian papyrus. Below that are 54 lines of ancient Greek, representing the language of the ruler, who demanded that a Greek translation be added to all such documents in his dominions because Egypt was already under Alexander's empire, half of which are missing at the end of the lines. The Rosetta Stone was made by a group of priests who lived in Egypt during the Ptolemaic dynasty, BC. It commemorates the first anniversary of the coronation of Ptolemy V, then king, at the age of 13. The text of the stone recounts the legitimacy of the throne that Ptolemy V inherited from his father. Ptolemy IV, as well as many of the good deeds that Ptolemy V contributed, such as the reduction of taxes, the introduction of the temple to the gods, and the creation of a new temple. Ptolemy V contributed many good deeds, such as tax reductions and the erection of statues in the temples, which were very supportive of the temples and the priests. In pre-Ptolemaic, Pharaonich Egypt, edicts such as these were originally issued by the pharaohs and were tantamount to imperial decrees, but in the Ptolemaic era, the priests, the only people who knew the Egyptian hieroglyphic script, became the issuers of the edicts, which was a very different feature. Shortly after the end of the 4th century AD, the Nile civilization declined and the reading and writing of Egyptian hieroglyphics, which were no longer in use, were completely lost, and despite the best efforts of many archaeologists and historians since then, they have not been able to decipher the structure and usage of these mysterious writings. It was not until 1,400 years later that the Rosetta Stone was unearthed, and its unique trilingual cross-referenced writing style unexpectedly became the key to decoding, because of the three languages, ancient Greek is the one that can be read by modern human beings, and by using this key to compare and analyze the contents of the other two languages on the stele, the script and grammatical structure of these lost languages can be understood. Among the many scholars who have attempted to decipher the Rosetta Stone, Thomas Young, an English physicist of the early 19th century, was the first to prove that the name, Ptolemy, was pronounced several times in the inscription. As for the French scholar Jean-Franc Cédelois Champollion, he was the first to understand that the Egyptian hieroglyphs, which had been regarded as using shapes to represent meanings, were also phonetic, and this major discovery became the key to deciphering all Egyptian hieroglyphs. This major discovery later became the key to deciphering all Egyptian hieroglyphs. It is for this reason that the Rosetta Stone has been described as a key foundation for understanding ancient Egyptian language and culture. One of the first to be identified was the name of this pharaoh of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the fifth. The name of the pharaoh in hieroglyphics is easily recognizable because it is surrounded by a border, and after translation, the Greek name of the pharaoh was Ptolemaios, which led to the identification of the hieroglyphic text, and was later found on an obelisk on the island of Philly, next to the name of Cleopatra. In total, there are 1,419 hieroglyphs on the Rosetta Stone, compared to 486 in Greek. Thus, scholars have discovered that hieroglyphs were not necessarily all ideograms, but also had a phonetic function, and that some symbols were pronounced and some were not. With the research of scholars, the mystery of Egyptian hieroglyphics is gradually unveiled. And this is also since the temple priests and clerks died. After a gap of more than 1,000 years, people finally threw the Rosetta Stone, once again can recognize Egyptian hieroglyphs, in October 2022, a number of Egyptian archaeologists asked the British Museum to return the Rosetta Stone.